2. Now, this happens after Jesus has sent out the 12. And remember, Jesus sent out the 12, and he said, don't take anything with you. Don't take any purse. Don't take an extra cloak. Um, just wear the clothes on your back. Don't take any money with you. And um, go and, um, and do the ministry. And then they came back to report what they had done. So Jesus sent out the 12. Now this is the 72. We don't know exactly who the 72 are. Perhaps they were converts from the when the 12 went out. Perhaps they were close followers of Jesus or those who had been in the crowd who had been touched. Maybe it was those who had been healed and committed their lives to follow Jesus Christ. So this is Jesus sending out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two. How many? Two by two. That's important. Remember that. Two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. So they're the, uh, what do you call the warm-up band? The warm-up band. They're the, the warm-up band. They're going before Jesus goes. Um, Jesus said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals. Do not greet anyone on the road. And when you enter a house, say first, peace to this house. And if someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and you are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet is a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. And then if you jump down to verse 17, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy and awesome are you, almighty God, and worthy is your name. We thank you, God, for the privilege of, of your word, and we ask you to teach us a new thing today. Teach us a new thing. All right, I want to do. Uh, I'm getting ready for um, Bible school with the Agape kids, so I want to. I want to teach you something, and um, this is not a prediction of how I hope the day goes, um, but this is um, getting it out of the way so that we don't have to deal with it later in the day. We're going to make rain right now. All right, and so it's going to start. I'm going to start with the choir, and I'm going to work. When I point to you, you do the action, whatever it is we're going to do. So we're going to start with snapping fingers.
responded to Jesus' command to peace, be still. Today, in this scripture, I want to point out two really important things. First of all, the reason that we can um, know peace is because Jesus speaks it into our lives, doesn't he? In the midst of the turbulence that we're ex ex experiencing, um, in the midst of the storms of our lives, Jesus is a very real and presence, very, very real and present with us. Isn't he, Barbara? Yeah. Um, isn't he Laura Duell and David Duell? Yeah. Isn't Jesus, let me see who else is in the storm right now. Well, we all have joy. Jesus in the middle of your storm? Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm missing you. Um, Butch, Jesus in your storm? Amen. Yeah. So, um, Jesus is the only one who can speak that peace to us. But Jesus speaks in many different ways. So the two things I want you to pay attention to from this text are, um, number one, Jesus didn't send anybody out alone. They went two by two. And Jesus told them to speak peace. Okay? So first, two by two. Um, we are not meant to do the work of ministry. And well, we're, in life, we're not meant to do life alone. Um, people will tell me constantly, I can worship Jesus on, on the golf course. And then they'll add, because I'm standing on holy ground and I just go. <laughs> or, or, or I can worship Jesus at the ocean. Uh, or you just told me, Melinda, how peaceful it is in the water when you were fishing yesterday. There's something about that, appreciating your surroundings. Or some of you are mountain people and you can say, I can worship Jesus on the mountain. Yes, and do. Do worship him wherever you are, whatever it is that is your place where you experience the presence of Jesus and where you appreciate the beauty of his good creation around you. Yes, do worship God in those places, but that does not exempt you from being a part of the body because we are so much more together than we are apart, and God has made us for each other. He's made us to fit like a hand in a glove, like two hands embracing together, like two hearts coming together as one. I talked to married couples um, uh, before they're married in counseling, and I talk about the fact that God is bringing them together um, as one. And there's something mysterious that God does in bringing two hearts together as in one that is beyond understanding. It is like Maurice and me. There's no longer Maurice and Michelle. Now there's Maurice and Michelle. I had one couple, um, Tom and Morgan. Tom was from England. I loved his accent. He had such a lovely accent. And I said, there's no longer Tom and Morgan. There's now Tom and Morgan. And Tom says, so it's to Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happens when God brings love into the life of people. They are no longer separate, but they are bound together as one in Jesus Christ. It's the same in the body of Christ. And we need each other. So when Jesus sends us, and he sends us, we're not the 12, we're not even the 72, we're the millions, we're part of the millions of Christians in this world, but we are the body bound together in Jesus Christ, and we need each other. Jesus knew that. That's why he sent them two by two. When we are um, on the mission trip, I told you we have a counting system. So before every meal, everybody gets a number on the first tonight. Everybody will get a number. I'm always one because I always start it. Um, and we just count off. And I'm like, okay, remember your number. And every time we count off. And so if number 11, I don't remember who 11 was. I might remember who 11 was. But 11 was missing a lot last year. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so if 11 is missing, we don't get on the bus. If 11 is missing, we don't start the meal. If 11 is missing, we don't do anything as a group. We do everything together so we count off to make sure nobody gets left out. God calls us to be a part of something, um, but we don't have to do it by ourselves. Isn't that great? Because sometimes when you talk about God sending you to do something or calling you to do something, you're like, ooh. <clears throat> Pat Brown had a brilliant idea. Um, when we first started sending out people to take communion, she put people in pairs. She
she, she didn't say, okay, you take communion to so-and-so, and now I realize sometimes your partner's not able to be with you, but she put us in pairs, and that's so biblical, isn't it? That we're sent out together so that we can support one another, not only to the ministry that we're serving, and in this case, the people that aren't able to be at our table will be served in their home or at their hospital bed. By the way, somebody needs to take it to Dean today, if somebody will think about that. Okay. Um, uh, not only are we called to go, but we're called to do that together, to be in that ministry together. It's a lot less scary, isn't it, when you have a partner? I remember uh, early in my life, um, I was in college, I worked at Lake Junaluska at the Children's Building, and we would take the kids on field trips, and everybody had to have, have a partner. And um, that way we make sure everybody <coughs> has their buddy. And this one little boy came up to me, and everybody else had partnered off. They were like, evidently an odd number. And he looks up at me, and he goes, will you be my pardonal? <laughs> oh, yes, I am your pardonal. We all need a partner in ministry. We all need somebody to share that with. So Jesus sends out the 72. <coughs> Incidentally, there's always, in Bible numerology, there's always significance and meaning. In the nation of Israel, there were how many tribes? Camel, so 12. There were 12 tribes. So Jesus sends um, the 12 disciples out, representing the 12 tribes. When Jesus sends out the 72, in the Old Testament, when there's a list of the Gentile nations, there's some controversy over where it's, whether it's 70 or whether it's 72, because in the Hebrew language it's 70, in the Greek language it's 72, um, but significant of sending to the Gentile nations. Isn't that, huh? So when Jesus sends out the 72, he sends them two by two, and here's what they're supposed to do. Wherever you go, speak peace. Now, we've talked about how Jesus is our peace in the midst of the storm, but Jesus has empowered us, we who have experienced his grace and mercy and love and said, yes, Jesus, I need you to live inside my heart. Jesus has called us then to go places where there is no peace. Anybody got any place in your world where there is no peace? Maybe it's your workplace, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your neighborhood, maybe, I don't know where, maybe it's where you buy your groceries, where you get your gas. Maybe you just are the only person who's going to come into that situation and speak peace. And we know how turbulent life is and how crazy life can be. And if people who are Christians experience that kind of turbulence, can you imagine not having faith and getting through those difficult times? Can you imagine, Barbara, not having faith? Can you imagine joy, not having faith? Butch, can you imagine duels? Can you imagine not having faith to get through this? Can you imagine not having faith to get through this? Some people don't have faith and they still have to get through it. What if you enter their lives and you speak peace? That's the, the premise of the mission. Go. Go with somebody. Speak peace. And here's the interesting part. You're not responsible for whether they receive the peace or not. That's why Jesus said, if they receive your peace, stay with them. Receive their hospitality. Let them take care of you. Um, if you go and they reject you, shake the dust from your feet and no more. Where is God calling you to speak peace? We're all sent. We're going to send 21 people into mission today. But we are all sent into this week. We are all sent by Jesus to speak his peace. We need his peace ourselves. We need the body of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. This isn't even, you've heard me say this before, this isn't even really a nice snack. And it's not that we're just having a little nice snack of wine bread, you only eat, right, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, kids who always want to come up and eat the leftovers? Okay, big kids too. Um, it, it, it's not just a little bread and a little juice. It's the body of Christ. Blood of Christ. That which sustains us. That which feeds us, nourishes us so that we can go.
So let us be fed in this meal. Let us be nourished by God's Spirit so that, not just for ourselves, but so that we can go and we can speak peace. Let us pray. Holy, gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. And we love you, Almighty God. We love you and we want to serve you with all that we have and all that we are. And God, I praise you for the 72 or however many of you are here today representing those who um, will be touched. God, let us go and let us speak peace. In order to speak peace, we have to have peace. So in this meal, as we gather around this table, speak your peace into our hearts. Bless us, God, as we are nourished by your gifts. our hand in preparation for communion. It's, let us be bread. You can just remain seated um, and you will sing the refrain and I will sing the verses.
Supper, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it and he gave it to his disciples, every one of them. Drink from this cup. This is my cup, my blood. A new covenant I give you. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember my blood poured out for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, broken and poured out, that we might be for the world the peace, that we might go forth filled with what you are and who you are and who you call us to be, and that we might go forth and speak your peace to all the nations, Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know who you're going to call us to, Lord. We don't know what you're going to ask us to do for you, but we know that whatever it is, we're not alone. We are with you, and we have a whole community of believers who support us and walk with us in the journey. And so, Lord Jesus, as we remember and as we give thanks for these gifts, let them nourish our souls, body, mind, spirit. Nourish us with who you are, that we might be for the world, the body, and the blood of Christ, broken and poured out. Thank you, gracious God. Today we also remember, Almighty God, those in our community, in our church, and in our hearts who are suffering. We mentioned them earlier in our service, some of them by name. In our hearts, we remember them, God. And we ask you to bless them right where they are right now. Bring your healing, bring your peace into the midst of their storms. And let us enter into those storms with them. And stand alongside them, bringing your peace into the midst of their storms. Thank you, gracious God. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the privilege of being the body of Christ wherever we are in this world representing who you are. And God, we pray a special blessing upon our youth and adults that leave on mission trip today. That they might um, bond together as one in you. And that they might also be bound together um, in serving and blessing the children of the Agave Center. But in blessing everyone that we encounter, may we be faithful witnesses of who you are and what you're up to in this world wherever we go and whatever. We pray that prayer for each and every one of us, gracious God. And God, we commit to you all that we have and all that we are. 